Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to 61 Justicar, the Cleric Tanking Soul. Justicar is a player favorite when it comes to raid progression because they offer something that no other tank can, combat res, which is typically only available in healing rolls. In this guide, I'll show you where to put your points, which masteries to use, and how to play Justicar. So let's go ahead and get started. So looking at the Soul Tree breakdown, you see we got the full 61 points in Justicar. There are a couple other variants that use less than 61 points in Justicar to pick up various other skills. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we will be doing the 61 point Justicar version. For the secondary soul, we go 5 in Planar Study and in Inquisitor for the 10% spell power increase. We go 1 in Armor of Treachery to pick up the this buff, which gives you a 3% armor and base health increase. For the third soul, we go 9 in Shaman, that's 5 in Thick Skin for the 5% damage reduction. 1 in Courage of the Bear to pick up this buff that increases your base health by 5%. 2 in Singled Out to increase your single target damage by 4%. And also 1 in Vicious Straight to increase your critical hit chance by 1%. As a bonus for going in Shaman, you also pick up Ride the Lightning, which is a nice gap closer. Moving over to the Masteries, level 61 would take Righteous Protection. This increases your block mitigation and guard from equipment by 5%. Level 62 would take Divine Inspiration. This one allows your Doctrine of Authority, which is one of the abilities that you get, to apply Censure to the enemy and no longer consumes a Conviction on cast. Convictions are the main mechanic of Cleric. Uh, you can have a total of 7 with 61 points in Justicar, and we'll talk about how you consume them later on in this video. Uh, but your Doctrine of Authority right here is this ability here and it will now apply Censure which is a damage over time ability here. Level 63 we take Swift Judgment. This increases your unmounted movement speed by 10% and it will also, as a bonus, increase the radius of your guard by 3 meters which is really really nice. Uh, level 64 we take Faith's Reward. This one is going to increase the range of Ride the Lightning and Face Step by 10 meters. Uh, your, your Gap Closer Ride the Lightning usually has a 20 meter range. With that Mastery it has a 30 meter range which is really really nice. Moving up to 65, we take Soul Strain because it's a very versatile skill. I typically will use it as a full heal every one minute. Uh, however, you can use it to save another tank or another healer in your raid if you're having issues with that. Um, but it's very versatile, very nice to have. So that's it for the Souls and Masteries, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the macros. So starting at the top with a single target macro here, you'll see I do have a shift modifier at the top. How that works is if I hit my 1 key, which is where this macro is located, it will fire off Strike of Retribution first from this line down. This is where it will start. Uh, if I hold shift down and hit my one key, it will fire off Hammer of Duty, which is going to be your single target finisher. Uh, this is really nice because it kind of streamlines the buttons and lets you do all your single target stuff uh, as far as damaging abilities go from one button. Uh, so how, what's in the single target macro here is Strike of Retribution. That's going to be this fella here. You can only use this after a success, uh, successful block. It's off global cooldown, so it's basically free damage. Uh, we have Bolt of Radiance there, which is going to be just a uh, cooldown damaging ability there. We have Doctrine of Authority here, which is going to be a pretty heavy damage ability that also restores health to five party array members. Then we have Perceptor Refuge. This is going to be a 5% block buff. And also we have Reckoning, which is going to be your uh, range damage spammer. Uh, and also increases your movement speed by 15% as well. So moving on to the area of effect macro here, we have the Hammer of Faith as the show here. Uh, we have Cast Shift Hammer of Faith. This is going to be your AoE finisher. So if you hit your 2 key, which is where this macro is at, it will fire off your Doctrine of Authority first and then even Justice. Now, you might ask why you have Doctrine of Authority in your A of Effect macro. Well, that's because when you cast Doctrine of Authority because of our Masteries, it applies Censure. And then once you use your AoE Finisher, which is your Hammer of Faith here, uh, it will spread Censure to all those enemies. So, pretty nice for, for uh, AoE setup there. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, by all means, please remove it from the macro. But I like to have it in there uh, because it makes it easy to just get, get it spread quickly. Uh, and then, of course, Even Justice is going to be your melee AoE spammer. However, Even Justice does have a 7 meter range, so it's not completely, completely melee. Moving on down, we have the standard battle rest here. This is just so I can put a mouse over UI on it, so I can hover the cursor over that person's raid frame and hit this uh, 6 key, which is where this macro is, and it will res that person. Moving on down, we have a self-heal macro 1 and self-heal macro 2. I won't go into too much detail on these because I'm going to explain them in the play style uh, later in this video. However, just know that one of them uses one cooldown and then the self-heal, and then it uses another cooldown in the self-heal, and I'll explain how this works and how I use this later on. Moving up to the top, we have the self-heal macro. This is a cast at self soul stream. Um, I use this all the time on my R keybind uh, as a personal cooldown. And then, of course, we have the tank K-alert macro here. Uh, so that's it for the macros, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the action bar. So moving on down to the top left here, uh, we have Mind of Leadership. This is going to be your quote-unquote tank buff. It enables guard, increases your base health, armor, and resistances by 35%, and also increases your threat generation by 400%. Uh, so that's pretty nice stuff there. you got to make sure you toggle that on. Uh, otherwise, you can miss it out on quite a bit of, uh, of health and, and 
uh, tanky stuff there. So make sure you put this on as soon as you swap to tank. Moving to the right, we have Courage of the Bear. This is your 5% base health buff. Moving to the right one more, we have Armor of Treachery. This is a 3% armor and base health increase. Over the right one more, we have Vengeance of the Winter Storm. This causes weapon attacks to deal an additional 290 damage. Over the right one more, we have Righteous Mandate. This is a unique cleric mechanic here. Uh, you have an ability called Salvation that you get passively for being a Justicar. Whoever you apply your Righteous Mandate to will get the same heals that you get from your Salvation from casting abilities. Uh, as a bonus, whoever the target of your Righteous Mandate is, whenever you use your Reprieve skill, which we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, they will also receive a lot of healing as well. And I'll talk about the usage of this here in a minute. Over to the right, we have the Tank Kalerts here. These five skills here I just put here so that I could show you the tooltips on them. Moving on down to the middle bar, we have, this is from a trinket that I got from Ren of Fate. It's a 50,000 shield. You won't typically have, if you do have this, you can put it on your Z key. If not, uh, you can put the expert version there or you can put another cooldown there. Totally up to you. Moving to the right, on the Q key, we have Reprieve. This is a 100% heal. Uh, heal, uh, heal. Uh, that also will return 50% of your max health to your target. Uh, so as you can see here, I have about 145k health uh, self-buffed here right now. Uh, so this is going to return um, roughly 70-75k-ish around that range to, to whoever my, the target of my Righteous Mandate is. Now typically I will make this uh, either the healer, the purifier typically, or maybe the other tank if uh, the tank's taking a bunch of damage. That way I can use this uh, to kind of help him survive as well. So pretty powerful stuff right here, and it's on a one-minute cooldown, which is really awesome. I'm moving up to the E key here. We have Just Defense. This is a 50% absorb that lasts 10 seconds, also on a one minute cooldown. On the R key, we have the Soul Stream cast itself here. Uh, next to that, we have the Doctrine of Glory. This is going to consume all convictions and reduce damage taken by 2.86 per conviction. Uh, basically, it reduces damage by 20%. All tanks get some kind of uh, cooldown like this. Uh, but when I will typically use this is uh, if, if uh, taking quite a bit of damage or there's a burst phase coming up, I'll use this right before it. Uh, to kind of suck up some of that damage, but typically this isn't really needed anymore, but uh, it's there just in case you want to use it. I will typically use my convictions more for a damage, uh, more for damage now than I will for actual uh, mitigation, just because it's not really needed anymore, but if you're an up-and-coming tank, you can use Doctrine of Glory to help soak some damage up. Over to the right, I have Soul Stream on its own key, just in case I need to use it to top up another tank. Uh, over to the right, I have Doctrine of Bliss here. This is going to heal you for 4,000 health per conviction. Uh, keep in mind it will consume up to uh, four convictions total with your 61 points in Justicar, uh, making it heal for approximately 16k or so with my gear. One more, right, one more. We have mana potions because in, with cleric, I typically will keep a mana potion on me in every spec that I have, except for Inquisitor, uh, just in case. So it's nice to have them just in case. Over the right, one more. We have purpose. When you toggle this on, it causes your weapon attacks to restore 10% mana to the cleric. Uh, the only bummer to this is you do have to use a weapon attack such as Strike of Judgment to make it work. So if I start seeing myself low on mana uh, and I've already used a mana pot, then I'll just toggle this on real quick and mash this Strike of Judgment a few times to get some mana back and then go back to your normal rotation. Now typically you won't have to use that unless you're on a really, really long fight. But if you're pretty good at when to use your mana potions, you won't have to worry about it. Moving right, one more, we have Censure. You typically won't cast this by, your, by itself because your Doctrine of Authority applies it for you. Uh, but if you do want to or need to apply it by itself, it's right here. Uh, we have Intercede. This is going to be your Intercept. Um, the only fight currently that I know of that you need to use this on is Drakenoth of Fate and Ren of Fate. Um, you'll, see, you'll see you need to use it on an ability that he casts called Doom. Moving down to the main bar, we have the single target macro here. We have the area of effect macro here. We have the Ride the Lightning here. This is your gap closer. We have the single target uh, ability called Provoke that forces the enemy to attack the cleric for three seconds. This is your single target force attack. This one right here is your AoE force attack. Number six is going to be your battle res. Number seven is going to be your resplendent embrace with your self heal. So this this buff right here, resplendent embrace, and also doctrine of bliss. Number eight is going to be total assurance in doctrine of bliss. And number nine is going to be doctrine of loyalty, which is going to be your AoE heal. Uh, moving over to the right one more, we also have interdict, which is going to be an interrupt. And then, of course, we have the Rebuke, which is going to be your AoE pull. And then, of course, equals key standard break free. So pretty standard stuff there. Uh, now that we talked about the action bar some more, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the K alerts real quick. So for K alerts, um, I do put quite a few other tank K alerts in here for stuff that I tank. For instance, you'll see I have an Ink Blast in here and Puncture Heart for Ungala, a couple other uh, mechanics in here. Uh, so we're going to ignore those for now. We're just going to talk about the mechanic. The, uh, Kalerts that go with the actual Justicar build here. So yeah, you can see I got quite a bit of stuff here. So ignore all that stuff. Uh, coming on down here, you'll see we have Latent Blaze. 
I keep this up because typically most raids are going to be running a purifier and they're going to have a latent blaze up on you. Uh, so you can kind of keep an eye on the corner of your screen and if this is up, you know that you have kind of a safety net there. Uh, and you can kind of judge bit what cooldowns you want to use based on if that is or isn't up. So moving over right here, this isn't, this isn't a K alert. This is actually from the Rift UI, but this will tell you how many convictions you have and how long they're going to last for. Now every three or four seconds, I think, you get one conviction and you also get convictions from using uh, your Justicar abilities. Um, so this is a nice way to track it here. Over right here, you'll see this is going to be your uh, Doctrine of Glory buff here. This is just going to be a timer telling you how much you have left on it. It does last for only four seconds. It's not very long. Um, so you can track it here to kind of know uh, when you need to chain another cooldown if the uh, burst phase is still ongoing. Down here to the left more, we have Censure. This is going to be your damage over time ability. It's going to track the duration. Uh, it's also going to let you know um, when your um, your dots fall off because dots are the, these dots are pretty important to keep up because it reduces their, their uh, hit chance by 5%, which is kind of nice. And then, of course, at the bottom here, you see we have Resplendent Embrace and Total Insurance. Those are just timers to let you know how much longer you have on those buffs. Uh, so Total Assurance lasts 30 seconds, and it tracks the stacks. You get two stacks. And then Resplendent Embrace lasts 10 seconds. So... Um, how that will work is, is uh, well, actually, we'll talk about it here in just a minute, okay? So uh, now that we talked about the K alerts and such, we will move on to how you play just a car in a group or raid environment. For single target tanking, you want to try and gain as much threat as you can as fast as you can. So in order to do that, we're going to target our raid boss here, and then we're going to use one of our finishers that consumes all seven convictions. That's going to be Hammer of Duty on your one key. So in order to cast that, you'll, you'll hit Shift. Hold Shift down, you'll hit 1. That'll fire your first Hammer of Duty using all your seven convictions. Then you'll come over to your 8 key and you'll fire off Total Assurance, which will give you those 7 convictions back. And then you'll go back to your 1 key again and hit Shift 1 again. That's a double Hammer of Duty. You should st establish quite a bit of threat that way. Uh, alternatively, if you do have like a lot of bursty DPS out there that are pretty trigger happy and are pulling the boss off you constantly, uh, you can lead out with a Provoke as well. Uh, this is your single target force taunt. It will force the enemy to attack you for 3 seconds, giving you a nice little 3 second insurance policy there. Uh, it is on an 8 second cooldown, so it will come back very fast if you need to use it to pick up ads and other stuff. Uh, however, sometimes I will use Provoke to pull with, uh, simply because you do, you do get those uh, a couple of people in uh, raid pugs and stuff that will just be real trigger happy and firing on the boss before you even get to them. So that is an option as well. Uh, so at that point, once you've used your Shift 1 for your Hammer of Duty, move over to your Total Assurance to give you 7 convictions back and use another Hammer of Duty. Uh, you'll run into the boss, or you'll, you should be on the boss by this, by this time, and you'll begin spamming your 1 key. Uh, so once you spam your one key, it'll go through those bunch of different skills that you have, your Strike Retribution, Bolt of Radiance, Percept Refuge, all that stuff. And that's how you're going to maintain aggro most of the time. If you see the boss trying to rip away at any point, which um, the only time that may happen is if you are in expert dungeons and you're working on gearing up, um, you may have issues with uh, more geared players pulling aggro off you. If you do have issues with that, uh, you can use your Provoke pretty liberally to make sure that you're um, establishing aggro. And you're also going to be wanting to make sure that you are casting your uh, hammer of duty once you have seven convictions every single time because that's going to establish a lot of threat for you. So what that looks like is you'll target the boss, you'll do a shift one to cast hammer of duty, you'll fire off total assurance, and you'll do another shift one to consume that again. And that, that is how you'll establish your initial aggro. After that, you're going to be mashing your one key until you get seven convictions, and then you're going to do a shift one to consume those convictions. So that's pretty much what, what, uh, how single target tanking goes, guys. So there's a couple of different ways you can do AoE uh, tank management with Cleric. Uh, the way that I do it is I like to target a mob that's close to the middle of the pack. I will use my Righteous Imperative to make sure that they're all attacking me for the next three seconds. And then I will hit my 2 key once, and then I will hit my Shift 2 key to fire Hammer of Faith. Now, will you ask why I do that? Because you remember, the Hammer of Faith macro's first line is Doctrine of Authority. And Doctrine of Authority is going to apply Censure. So once you do that and use your Hammer of Faith, it'll spread it to all the mobs. So what that looks like is you're going to come up to this boss here. You're going to fire your 2 key which is going to fire off Sentra and, and your uh, Doctrine of Authority. Then you're going to do Shift 2 to spread it to all these mobs. So once you've done that, all these mobs all have Sentra on them now. And it's all ticking on all these guys. So that's what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and wait for our convictions to get back to 7 here. And I will show you what this looks like full-blown uh, getting threat. So typically if you're, uh, if you're trying to get AoE threat, in order to grab them when I'm close, I'll use the Righteous Imperative to make sure they're attacking me. And then after that, I'll hit my 2 to fire off Doctrine of Authority, Shift 2, and then 8, Shift 2. And at this point, you should have established all the threat for all these things. And if they're all spread out pretty far like these guys are currently, um, I can't pull these guys in. But if you are in an actual expert or raid, you could hit your rebuke, and it would pull all these mobs in right on you and, and make it real easy for the AOE uh, spec people to burn them down. So 
pretty strong stuff there. But that's pretty much it. That's all it is for AOE rotation, guys. After that, you're going to be firing, you're going to be spamming your two key for even justice, and uh, that would be proccing your uh, shaman buff as well. And every time you get to shit seven convictions, you'll hit a shift two uh, to consume that. And then, of course, while you're spamming your two key, as soon as your censure wears off, uh, you'll you'll uh, have another doctrine of authority to apply it again, and you use shift two to consume the seven uh, convictions and reapply censure to all the creatures around you. So. Pretty easy stuff, guys. It's uh, very easy to maintain threat on Cleric. Let's go ahead and talk about cooldowns for a second, guys. As you know, Cleric does have quite a few different cooldowns that are all on a minute timer, which is really nice. It means you can use them pretty liberally, and they'll be back in time for the next phases. So looking at the cooldowns really quick, we have the Reprieve, which is 100% heal. We have Just Defense, which is a 50% shield. We have Soul Stream, which is going to be pretty much in vulnerability for 3 seconds. It heals for quite a bit. Uh, as a note though, the Soul Stream, the first tick will not heal you, so you have to be really careful with this one if you're using it reactively. And then we have Doctrine of Glory, which is a 20% damage reduction. And then we also have down here a couple of the healing combos, but we'll discuss those here in a minute. So the way to use these, typically what I'll do is Just Defense is going to be on my, my priority. It's going to be the first one that I use. And the reason for that, uh, Just Defense and also your Trinket, because these are both shields. The reason for that is because Reprieve and Soul Stream can both be used in conjunction with other people as well for saving healers or other tanks and stuff like that. So I typically like to use the, uh, the pigeonholed abilities first, the abilities that only affect me, and then use the abilities that I can use for two different purposes. So for instance, Reprieve, yes, it does 100% health and heals you, but it will also heal your target of the Righteous Mandate ability for 50% of your health, which is about 75k or so. Uh, 72 or so K with my with my hit points currently and that'll top somebody up so if you have this on a purifier that just took a big hit for whatever reason uh, you can use this to, to heal them to full and save them so it's dual purpose in that respect uh, same thing with soul stream you can use this to heal another tank that you might be doing like a tank swap mechanic and a healer might have died momentarily you could swap to them and use soul stream to keep them alive until they can get the healer back up there's multiple purposes for for reprieve and for your soul stream ability there uh, so, so as I said typically I will use just defense first and, uh, and the, the trinket proc, or not the proc, the, uh, the clickable here as well. Those are the two that I like to use uh, mostly. Uh, something else to keep in mind is if you're in a raid and you're running a purifier, which typically you will be because they're so overpowered right now, you will usually have latent blaze applied to you as the tank. Uh, so latent blaze is going to be that insurance policy that when you take a hit below 20%, it's going to fire off and heal you for a lot of healing. Uh, so that's going to be something I kind of watch when I'm tanking. And if I have that on, I'll use my cooldowns pretty conservatively. Uh, because you may get to a point in the fight where the purifier dies and that latent blaze fires off and you're like, oh crap, i got to stay alive for 10 seconds or whatever until they can get this, this healer back up. If that's the case and you have a full spread of cooldowns to use, uh, that might very well be viable for you. So you just got to kind of feel it out and get some experience doing it to kind of uh, learn those situations and what to do in those, in those certain instances. So, uh, so now we talked about the cooldowns a little bit. Let's move on down to the healing combos. These are probably my favorite part, and it's probably one of the best kept secrets of Justicar because not a lot of them out there use these combos that I've seen anyway. So first off, you have Doctrine of Bliss here. Uh, at first glance, it looks pretty lackluster. It heals 3,800 health, right? Consumes one conviction. But if you remember from earlier in the video, it is also going to consume an additional three convictions and also increase your healing from this by 300%, making it heal for approximately 16K or so. Well, you might say, well, 16K is kind of a drop in the bucket, right? Yes but not if you pair it with your Resplendent Embrace and your Total Assurance. So how this works is if you start seeing big dips in your health and you have set, you're have you already at 7 convictions, you can fire off your 7 key to fire off Resplendent Embrace, which is by the way is off global cooldown. So you'll mash your 7 key in order to fire off Doctrine of Bliss and your Resplendent Embrace. So it'll, they'll heal for roughly 24, 25k or so, each one of those. There's two of them. So right there is 50k. That's, that's a third of your health right there in two globals. So pretty good mitigator there. After that, you move to your 8 key. And you'll hit your 8 key to fire off your total assurance, which is going to grant you another 7 convictions and also increase damage and healing of the next 2 conviction consuming abilities by 50%. So now you've increased it by 100%. So now you're going to be healing for over 30k per hit. And that's, that's non-crit as well. So if it crits, it could very well heal you for a big chunk of your health. So using those combos, you can fire off 4 heals that are, that are very, very strong right after that. So 24k, 24k, 30-something k, 30-something k. And that's non-crit. So you can, you can heal yourself pretty much to full there almost with, with, with those abilities. So you want to try and kind of pay attention to those as well because they're very, very nice uh, for topping yourself up. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and unequip my gear and then re-equip it so that we can get a little uh, hit point deficit. So we're at 50% there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over the first two here. Uh, we're going to pretend like we don't have any convictions and we're going to go Resplendent Embrace and then we're going to go Total Assurance and fire off our Doctrine of Bliss. 
And as you can see there, we just sealed for 35 and 26 there. So we just sealed for a little over 60K. And that's just, that would be the second phase, the using the total assurance. If we went through the first phase with a resplendent embrace, you fire that off and you hit for 24K and 24K again. So you can use these for, uh, for some good passive uh, healing, not really passive, active healing uh, ability there as well. So that's pretty much it for the cooldowns, guys. Cleric's pretty straightforward as far as that goes. Um, you don't really have to manage them too hard because, like I said, they're all on minute cooldowns. So you can use them pretty liberally, and you have quite a few. If you have one of the trinkets, you have you have four different abilities that you can use, plus you have your Doctrine of Glory. Now, Doctrine of Glory, typically, uh, when this this is kind of a last resort for me, usually. And the reason for that is because it uses your convictions, and I like to use my convictions for damage uh, when I can. Uh, but you can use this for stuff like um, um, if, you, if you one tank, uh, the, the Who fight in Ren of Fate, the second boss Ren of Fate, you can use this during the red uh, to take less damage, or you can use this during burst phases to take take less damage. But I typically only use this when there's a when there's a gear deficit or, or an issue with keeping with uh, keeping me alive. So, uh, but it's totally up to you. You can play around with it, find what works out best for you guys. That's part of the fun of it anyway. If you guys have any questions on Justicar tanking, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.